Guys, if you ever get up to Laconia and you're riding around the lake, you want to go to see Castle in the Clouds. This place is spectacular. Very historic buildings and a ton of history here. Hang on, I'll bring you on a tour through it. This is the carriage house. I guess this was built before horses existed. I mean, cars existed. Check out these pictures, circa 1925. How cool is that? Wow, skiing was a thing up here, I guess, huh? Yeah. That must be the castle right there. Very cool. Of course, with Lake Winnipesaukee, they did a lot of boating and horsing and skating and skiing. Back in they didn't have the internet back in 1925, huh? It's safe to say all the people that were there then are Probably long gone. View out the window here is freaking spectacular over Lake Winnipesaukee. Whoops. Look at that. That's miles away. You got a full bar here. You can get a cold one. I got a cold one. Holy moly. One word. Wow. Would you look at this place? View is absolutely ridiculous. Look at this. I don't know if the camera's picking it all up, but it's pretty freaking spectacular. Wow. Yeah, I think so. And probably you can see Wentworth. Wow. Unbelievable view. I, I'd safe to say this is a million dollar view. My cold one. Cold Coke. Some caramel corn. Breakfast of champions. Normally don't drink Coke, but every once in a while, it's good if you have a headache. Going on the trolley tour to Castle on the Clouds. It's school trolley time. Thank you for visiting today. Before you begin your tour of the Lucknow Mansion, this is date and some important information for your visit. The story of Thomas Plant epitomizes the American dream. Born in Bath, Maine in 1859 and raised in a working class family, Plant left school at age 14 to help support his family. He worked a variety of jobs before taking an apprenticeship as a shoe laster in a factory. In only 11 years, he rose from being a laborer to owning his own company, the Thomas G. Plant Company in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts, which he established at the age of 32. By 1910, it was reportedly the largest factory in the United States and the largest shoe factory in the world employing over 5,500 people and producing 6 million pairs of shoes annually. Tom was 51 years old in 1910 when he sold his business, adding $6 million to his existing fortune and began to plan his retirement. On a trip to Europe in the fall of 1912, Tom met Olive Dewey, 24 years his junior. He and Olive married in the spring of 1913. Olive was a well-educated young woman before meeting Tom, she had studied Greek at Wellesley College and worked as a school teacher. She enjoyed the many outdoor activities their new home had to offer, including overseeing the large greenhouse and gardens on the property. And both Tom and Olive enjoyed riding their prized horses on the estate trails. Together, they lived here from 1914 to 1941. This estate, which was originally called Lucknow, consisted of a 16-room mansion, stable and six-car garage, two gatehouses, a 100-foot glass greenhouse, an 18-hole golf course, a tennis court, a lake for swimming and fishing, a boathouse on Lake Winnipesaukee, and roughly 45 miles of carriage and bridle trails for exploring the property. Assembling this great estate took about two years, and Tom was sometimes called ruthless in his transactions with the homesteading families that lived here. In the end, the plant's property included 6,300 acres. It stretched from the seven peaks of the Ospi Mountains to the shores of Lake Winnipesaukee. It is said that over 1,000 people labored to engineer and build all of the property's features over a period of only about 18 months. The arts and crafts style mansion and buildings were designed by architect J. William Spiel of Boston who reportedly worked closely with Tom to design a home that reflected the global architectural traditions observed by the plants on their travels abroad. The construction and amenities were cutting edge for 1914. Steel beams, poured concrete, 
and terracotta architectural blocks were virtually unheard of in domestic construction at the time, but came together here to create a sturdy and fire-resistant mansion. Likewise, throughout the house, you will find technologies that were state-of-the-art at the turn of the 20th century. Central vacuum, ammonia brine refrigeration, and a house-wide interphone system, to name a few. These all ran on electricity, which was produced by a hydropowered generator for the first seven years that the plants resided here. Despite these modern touches, Beale and the plants designed this home to harmonize with its surroundings using natural and sometimes local materials which created a rustic, handcrafted look that fit well into the arts and crafts aesthetic. Look closely as you tour the home and you will certainly find details that celebrate a tradition of hand craftsmanship. Although Tom and Olive had no children, they weren't alone up here. They entertained close friends and family at Lucknow and of course, they had a large staff to help them run the estate. A staff of up to six people may have lived in the mansion at one time, likely cleaning, cooking for, and serving the family and guests. Other servants across the estate performed additional tasks. There were stable hands, ground keepers, farm employees, and of course, a chauffeur. We don't yet know the names of most of these people, but inside the house, you will see examples of their living and workspaces. Unwise investments and a habit of overspending resulted in financial difficulty for Tom and Olive starting in the 1920s. They attempted to sell Lucknow without success and eventually mortgaged the property to a friend who allowed Tom and Olive to continue to reside there. When both the mortgage holder and Tom died in 1941, the estate was foreclosed on and Olive returned to her family in Illinois with just her personal belongings. After Tom Plant's death, the property went through a series of owners and was first opened to the public in 1959. The estate has been open almost continuously since then as a New Hampshire attraction. In 2002, the Lakes Region Conservation Trust purchased what remained of the historic estate to protect it from development. LRCT still maintains over 5,000 acres of the land, and 2022 marks the 20th anniversary of that purchase. Since 2006, the nonprofit Castle Preservation Society has owned and managed Lucknow's historic buildings and grounds and is responsible for their restoration and preservation. Referencing historic photos taken in the 19-teens and 1920s, we are in the process of restoring the interiors to their appearance at that time. In 2018, the castle was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Because Lucknow is such a unique and significant historic estate that we all wish to preserve for future generations, we ask that you observe the following. Please no food or drink inside the home. Castle team can give you more information about these opportunities. Museum interpreters will be on hand throughout the house and I encourage you to ask them any questions you may have about Lucknow and the plants. Fireplace is interesting because as you can see there's no flue above the fireplace. Yeah. And off to the right. And oh, so, interesting. Yeah, so you have an uninterrupted view of the, of the mountains. Wow. That's amazing. Yep. The artwork in here is predominantly original. The two Morans are digital reproductions. Doors, walls, windows, and floors are all original. 90% of the furniture is original. That's the furniture amazing. in here is original except for the pool table. The original pool table walked with the subsequent owner. The original pool table was more ornate and matched the furniture. Right. This was built for Tom's Ball Peak Colony Club, which is a golf course and country club he um, developed in the so These are decorative pipes. Mm -hmm. There's a room behind there that housed 1,800 pipes. So wow. the organ was being played. It could be heard on the key of the Wow. Amazing. Yeah. She played, and it's an Aeolian organ. tabletop that would go on top of that to allow for eight people but they would have three people six people at max visiting um, so this is the dining room it's really quite spectacular the um, furniture was custom built for the space because of the shape wow and again this is original furniture as you go through the house check out the roundels and the um, 
throughout the house, there's 21 of them and they're hand painted. Um, all the doors and windows came from a rag company in England um, and they're just beautiful. Wow. The original windows. Yep. Wonderful. Wow. This area is the butler's pantry. Um, this was all of the China. But, right. but this would have been something that would have been more, more or less a commercial type right. of refrigeration. Over on your stove, yeah. It was, it had a crank on the side that you could crank the ash down to go to the basement and it would be cleaned out there rather and than And that would be the oven there, mm -hmm. right? The yeah. ovens and they were warming up. It was electric, so they just pushed a button and it would move. It went from this kitchen to the basement to the sub basement. The sub basement was the boiler room, and that was on the front and also the two basement uh, side doors. And then you can have his own personal things from here. He had a safe here for any. Wow, that was his factory right there. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. They would have done maybe for sporting things, and then beyond that's the um, bedroom. What is the door made out of? Uh, oak. Oak? Like oak yeah. Wow, it's spectacular the way it's all carved. Yeah, and whenever these kinds of things like... Needle shower. Hello. One ring eating. Old school phone. <laughs> Over the most expensive light, uh, skylight on this floor, this is, is um, actually six more that are smaller uh, on the light up here as well. Wow. Yeah, head up that deck if you'd like. This is nice. Is this original floor too? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Spectacular. I can see her well, world to stay here and not right. move from this site. Yep. Because it was a pocket door, she could shut off the, you know, shut out the world and just have a... Yeah. 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 Castle in the clouds. Isn't her sink? It's a giant block of ivory soap that you don't see. The view on the front yard here. architecture of this is unbelievable talk about overbuilt look at the size of these timbers for this little cupola like we could see in a holding up a factory massive it was built to be fireproof built totally out of concrete metal stone even the windows are metal the building's completely fireproof there's nothing on this building well the roof the walls everything's the windows fireproof these big timbers are hard to burn too. This concludes our little tour of the castle in the clouds. Hope you enjoyed it. And here we have a cemetery and there's a story behind this. It has nothing to do with the castle in the clouds other than the baron of the castle in the clouds, as the locals called him, wanted to have it moved. And he basically bought the 6,000 acres of property in front of us 
all the way down to Lake Winnipesaukee, all the way to the mountains back there and pushed out all the local farmers. And uh, they said he was ruthless in his dealings with them. And uh, he wanted to buy this one piece right in the middle here and the family wouldn't sell it. He eventually pushed him out and he tried to relocate the cemetery, but the sheriff showed up and threatened to have him arrested if he messed with the tombstone. So the cemetery stayed here, much to his dismay. But um, quite a lot of history here on the place. If you look it up online, there's a stone uh, gatekeeper building down there, but just an amazing facility. Metal windows, terracotta roofs, quality construction. This wall will be there for, for thousands of years.